Good morning. My name is Justin Beatty. I'm one of the pastors here at People's United Methodist Church, and I'd like to welcome you to the premiere of our streaming service this morning. Um, and if you, there's anything in this service that is especially meaningful to you, then I would invite you to put it in the comments below. Uh, today we are celebrating uh, the third Sunday of Advent, uh, and as we get closer to Christmas, we have a number of holiday events coming up. This Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we are having a carol sing. In fact, we're having a carol sing on Zoom, and the Zoom link to participate in that can be found on our website or on our app. Uh, next Sunday is our Christmas pageant. Uh, during the, the service, um, the kids have been hard at work, making sure that we have something special to celebrate the coming of Christmas, uh, even, even as putting all of that together has been a little bit more difficult during the pandemic. Um, I'd also like to invite you to uh, watch our Christmas Eve service, uh, streaming service, which will be on YouTube and Facebook, premiering at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Uh, and you will be able to get to that premiere, well, the same way you got to this one. And as a reminder, we will be incorporating the ornament and candles that you received in your Advent boxes uh, into the Christmas Eve services. So if you haven't received your box yet and would like one, you can email the church and ask for one at office at peoplesumc.org. 
Um, lastly, our 4 p.m. Vesper service is still going on in the parking lot at People's Church at 4 p.m. today, uh, where we sing songs, share prayers, and meditate on a scripture reading together, um, if that is something that you're interested in. Uh, and now I invite you to take a deep breath, to center yourself on the enduring love of Christ, and to join us as we worship the living God. my grandson Clayton Dragney and we're glad to read for you today a story just like the stories that Jesus told his disciples. Once upon a time there was a little boy who had a terrible day. He left his lunch at home, he skinned his knee on the playground and no one wanted to sit with him on the bus. As he sank into his mother's arms at the end of the day, his mother said, Honey, what was the best part of your day? 
Nothing. The entire day was terrible. So the mother got down on one knee, wiped away his tears, and said, There is always some good. Sometimes we just have to really look for it. What was good about today? The mother said, For starters, you are here in my arms. Friends, any time we gather together to worship God, we are here in God's arm, arms. So may we recognize this tremendous gift, and in doing so, may we sow joy. Let us worship God. Hi, my name is Lynn Walters. Um, we're here to do the Advent candle lighting. Um, do you want to start? Okay, I'll start. I dream of dance parties in the kitchen. I dream of laughter that is contagious. I dream of birthday candles in another beautiful year. I dream of family game nights and dinner parties with friends. I dream of homemade Halloween costumes and homemade family recipes. I dream of fill porch fireflies and front porch swings. I dream of every little thing that brings joy, and I know it comes from God. So, so to today we light the candle of joy as a reminder that God's dream for this world involves the end of all tears. Hey, that was my joke. Mm. Alright, do you want to do the next one? God's dream is for this world in Falls a joy that overflows and is contagious. So may this fire burn bright, as is, and as it does, we may sing. May we, may we dance. <laughs> may we laugh. May we hold the, into the people we love. And may we sow joy in a hurting world, and may it be an act of holy resistance. Amen. Hi. Hello again, and especially hello again to any kids that may be watching. Um, so I'm wondering how many of you kids know what a musical is. Um, a musical is a movie or a play where uh, sometimes uh, when two people are talking together, instead of, of talking to each other, they start um, singing to each other instead. That's how they have their conversation is by singing. Uh, or when a person in the movie or the play is by themselves and they just start to sing to themselves uh, out of nowhere. Um, there's plenty of these movies out there. Perhaps you may have heard of Hamilton, a play. Uh, or, you know, since it is this time of year, the movie White Christmas is a musical. Uh, most Disney movies, by the way, are musical, uh, especially the animated uh, the cartoon movies. Uh, for example, uh, in Frozen, where Elsa just starts to sing out of nowhere about letting things go or jumping into the unknown, um, that's a musical. Uh, or in The Lion King, where Simba and Zazu are talking and Simba just starts singing about all the things he's going to do when he's king, uh, how he just can't wait to do them. Uh, musical. Uh, there are actually parts in the Bible uh, that are musicals too. Uh, for example, there's a scene in the book of Luke uh, where Mary, who just found out that she's pregnant with Jesus, uh, she goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who, as it turns out, is also pregnant. Uh, and Elizabeth tells Mary that her baby is special and that Mary is special and blessed because of the baby that, the baby that she's about to give birth to is Jesus Christ and because she's playing a huge part in God's plan to, to save humanity, uh, to save all of us. And Mary responds by just breaking out into a song, it's a musical. And, and Mary's song is about 
how thankful she is to be a part of the story of Jesus and the story about how God is going to save all of us through Jesus. Uh, she, she sings about how special this baby is and about how great it is that God wants normal people like her to help God out in this important story that, that God has for all of us, uh, that a regular young woman can be a part of such an important story because, you know, there wasn't really anything special about Mary when God chose her to give birth to Jesus. Um, and the cool thing about that and about Mary's song is that, I mean, if God wanted Mary to, to play a part in the, the story of Jesus, to help God bring Jesus into the world, um, because, you know, geez, again, Mary is just a, a regular girl, that God might also want to use regular people like us to help God make the world better too. Um, you know, we can be an important part in God's story just like Mary was. Uh, Probably not by giving birth to a baby like Mary did, but by doing something. Um, you know, so it's what's really important for us is to be on, on the lookout, to, to keep our eyes peeled, as my dad used to say, uh, so that we can see, we can notice when God wants us to do something special, when God wants our help to do something special um, for the world. Um, you know, just like Mary, it's almost enough to make you want to start singing. Um, but we won't do that. Uh, instead, would you please pray with me? God, thank you for today, and thank you for choosing us to be a part of your story in the world. Uh, I pray that you would help us to be looking for ways in which we can help you to do something special, just like Mary did. Uh, in your son Jesus' name, amen. scripture, we find pregnant Mary visiting her cousin Elizabeth, who is pregnant with John the Baptist. After being praised by Elizabeth, Mary breaks out into prophetic song concerning what God is going to do through Jesus. Hear these words from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 46 through 55. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, 
and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, my friends. My name is Jason Makey, and I'm one of the pastors here at People's Church in Oregon, Wisconsin, and I'm so glad to be here and worship with you. And today we're continuing our Advent sermon series, Those Who Dream, as we reflect on the oddness of this Advent and Christmas season. Would you pray with me? Creator God, Scripture is flooded with dreamlike images. The lion lying down with the lamb. Justice rolling like a mighty river. Swords being beaten into plowshares. The prisoner being set free. Good news to the oppressed, the whole world rejoicing. To our human ears, there are times when these words can sound like nothing more than a far-off dream. Downplaying prophecy to fantasy. However, what we know is that to dream is to hope, and to hope is to imagine, and to imagine is to wonder, and to wonder is to believe, and to believe is to live and breathe for your promised day. So give us the strength to listen as we dream, O oh God, for deep down we know your words are the very thing we need. Amen. Well, my friends, it goes without saying that this Advent and Christmas season is very unusual. I know many people in an attempt to find some joy during these difficult times started decorating for Christmas quite early. I saw many people's outdoor Christmas decorations and lights going up early in November, well before Thanksgiving. I know my 11-year-old daughter, Macy, asked if we could put up our tree on October 1st, to which we said, yeah, we don't think so. Christmas carols started playing on the radio the day after Halloween. Virtual Black Friday sales started just into November as well. I think we are and were yearning for something to celebrate and bring good cheer during these difficult times, hoping that some of these Christmas traditions may bring about a sense of joy in our lives. And yet, we are also honest with ourselves and we know that there will be a share of sadness around Christmas this year. Many families are choosing not to get together to keep one another safe and to help our hospitals from being even more overcrowded than they are. I know that my family and I won't be traveling to Appleton to be with my family and spend a couple of days there as we normally do. My parents did tell me this week that they'll be making a sleigh ride of sorts one of the next couple of weekends, bringing Christmas presents to our driveways and dropping them off. And we'll be able to say hi to one another outside, socially distanced and cold. So it'll probably be a really brief visit. So instead of uh, through the river and uh, uh, through the woods and over the river to grandmother's house we go. Uh, grandmother and grandfather are coming to our house via 
151. The Nutcracker, which usually has two performances at Oregon High School, is not being performed publicly this year. Christmas Eve service here at People's Church, while I still think can and will be a very meaningful service, will be different because we won't be gathering together in this room to celebrate. Instead, we'll be welcoming and celebrating the birth of the Christ child in our very own homes virtually. This year, Christmas just seems to be upside down. There was a pastor who spoke of a summer he spent down under in Australia and New Zealand. Of course, in New Zealand, down under is up, since when you're in New Zealand, you're up, and those of us in the Northern Hemisphere to them are down. He noted that while he spent his summer there, his July and August, there it was winter, not summer. Likewise, there the South was colder than the North. It was all very upside down, he remembers. Down there in New Zealand, or up there in New Zealand, or wherever, the church has a Christmas carol that is called Carol for Christmas, and it's about an upside-down Christmas. Because in New Zealand, Christmas is in the middle of summer, a day when everyone goes to the beach, you can't sing in the bleak midwinter. So someone came up with this song. Let's take a listen to it. I think most of us during normal times would say that we think of Christmas as the time when everything gets set right. It's a time to come home, to return, uh, to, to return to that time in our memories when all was warm and good and right, when everything that's come upside down in our lives is set at least for a couple of days in December right side up. And yet, if we really tell, pay attention to the Bible's telling of the story, most of the world of the first Christmas was as, up, as upside down as ours, just in a different way. It wasn't about a loving family mother caring for a family value mother caring for a conventional child. It was about Mary an unwed mother, expectant in a most unconventional way. It was upside down. 
The message of her pregnancy and of Jesus' birth came not through official governmental sanctioned uh, communication channels. It was delivered in song by angels. Those who noticed and were told about this new thing that God was doing in the world weren't biblical scholars or religious officials or even pious lay people. It was shepherds working the night shift who first got the gospel. And then later, the magi, these Gentile outsiders, pagan astrologers of all things. This morning, we hear Mary sing a Christmas carol shortly after she learns that she's going to have this baby. I think her song could be titled An Upside Down Christmas as well. Mary saying, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Mary sings of a world turned up sigh down, but in a very different way than we're experiencing, as I mentioned. Those who are high and exalted will be brought low. Those who are poor and hungry will be filled all by the advent of a baby. Mary got her life turned upside down by the angel Gabriel, and then she sang of a child in her womb who was going to dislodge, disrupt, and disturb. Later, one of the charges that was brought against the Christians, the early Christians, those who followed this babe, was these people are turning the whole world upside down. So think of Advent and Christmas as a time when God began turning things upside down. Would you consider for a moment the possibility that maybe, just maybe, that's why you're worshiping today, sitting in front of your TV or watching on your smartphone this December, singing songs and praying prayers, because you have recognized that the world everyone is pining for, the way things used to be, with the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer, and the rest of us being fed and busy enough to really not notice or care, what everyone calls or has called right side up, wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Maybe. Just maybe you're hoping to have the courage to work alongside this babe in turning the world upside down, not just now, but also when this pandemic is over. Professor and Episcopalian priest Kelly Brown Douglas labels this a moral imagination when she says, and I quote, Mary sung testimony of the hungry being filled and the rich being sent away empty uh, reflects nothing less than a moral imagination where the world will be set right. And so what does this mean for us and Advent people in our time? It means that we must carry forth into the world, as Mary did, a moral imagination. A moral imagination is grounded in the absolute belief that the world can be and will be made better. It will be just. A moral imagination envisions Isaiah's new heaven and new earth where the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. And thus, as Mary's saying, the poor and the rich shall be made equal. 
A moral imagination disrupts any notion that the world as it is, it, it, the, that the world as it is, is the way it should be, or ultimately is, going, is the way it's going to be. What does it mean for us to be a people of Advent in our time? It means that we must carry forth into the world a moral imagination of God's future and thus to really believe that the way things are is not the way things are going to be, which means one must act accordingly. We must, simply put, live into and act upon our moral imaginations. End quote. You know, the Bible is full of stories of people, people like Mary, who had their world turned upside down and inside out when they came face to face with God and then acted upon this moral imagination. There were two college students, a young man and a young woman, who met their sophomore year at an informational meeting for a spring uh, for the spring student mission trip to Honduras their college had been spending sending three mission teams to this one of the poorest countries in the western hemisphere for quite some time very few of the students who went on one of these trips came back the same well, after the meeting, he excitedly told a faculty member, we're going to Honduras together, and who knows where it might lead us. Well, then, sometime later, around Christmas, the faculty member saw him walking dejectedly across campus. She came up to the student and asked him what was the matter. Shelley isn't going to Honduras, he said. I'm sorry, she said sympathetically. I wonder why. Can't she afford the time? No, it's not that, he said sadly. Shelley said that her older sister Marissa went down there and it changed her. It made her mom and dad furious. Marissa said she got born again down there. Shelley said she got turned upside down. Smart young woman. Shelley seemed to know that proximity to this manger is a dangerous place to be. Each Christmas, we sing, O come, let us adore him. We come expecting the fulfillment of all our desires, the confirmation of all our prejudices and preconceptions. See, the baby has a face just like our face. He is cuddly and cute. What harm could there be in a baby? And yet, Mary reminds us, as we come closer to Christmas, take care as you gaze into the manger. Beware coming too close to this Savior. You don't know where he might lead you. There is risk. Your world might just be turned upside down again. Amen.
Good morning. My name is Karen Baker. I am excited we are continuing to share our 175th anniversary memories. In September, we explored the history of our first church in 1862 on Main Street. Through the building additions, and the church that we have now on Alpine. This month, we will be focusing on Christmas memories. I hope you enjoy them. On, on first Monday, we dressed up as a group. We had a meal and we sang Christmas carols. It was a lot of fun. At one point back in the 80s, we had a live nativity with a donkey and sheep. It was really cold. <laughs> Today we will be remembering Christmas Eve's of the past. My favorite memory of Christmas at People's Church is Christmas Eve and the candlelight service. I love how the room just fills up with so many people, people you don't always see and family is together and the lights go dim and everyone lights a candle and you sing Christmas songs and you can really feel the spirit on Christmas Eve. And that is my favorite time of Christmas at the church. Hi, my name is Amanda Kunzelman and I have several um, favorite Christmas memories from People's Church. I obviously I love the candlelight singing that we do. Um, I'm a big fan of the Christmas pageants. Uh, I love watching the kids get up there and really put it all all their effort in after working so hard for weeks. But my one of my favorite memories comes from last Christmas Eve service. I was actually at the church for all three services and it wasn't until the middle of the second service that I realized that Chuck, our pianist, was wearing these adorable elf slipper shoes with bells on them while playing the piano. So I thought that was just, um, just the greatest thing and such a wonderful memory. Christmas at People's Church has always been special to me. It's a time for family and friends to gather at our house for dinner before Christmas Eve service and again on Christmas Day. I usually usher Christmas Eve and I enjoy seeing people as they come in. They're very joyous greetings and enthusiasm for the season. It's especially fun to see uh, former students from the middle school and high school come in and uh, maybe talk a bit about things that happened at school and that uh, when they were in school, that's always fun. And then for the service, I think the pastors have always done a great job uh, preparing a meaningful service uh, that captures the, the time of the moment, the spirit of the moment. I always enjoy uh, the singing of Silent Night and the lighting of candles and the uh, the atmosphere in the sanctuary as Silent Night is sung and as the candles are then extinguished. And uh, again, it's a very joyous time and a time when people celebrate the birth of Christ together. Merry Christmas! And now, uh, would you please join me in our pastoral prayer? And as a reminder, if you have any joys or concerns, you can email either Jason or myself, or you can put them in the comments down below. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to celebrate your coming down to earth. And we pray that you would continue to be with us throughout the coming weeks as we celebrate, um, as our celebrations might look a little different this year. Uh, we pray that you would be with everyone who is not able to be with their loved ones this Christmas, either because we're sheltering in place or perhaps because their loved ones have passed away in the last year. I pray that you would be present with them and that they would feel your love throughout this holiday season. We pray that you would be with everyone who has been impacted by COVID, uh, either those who have gotten it themselves or those who have a loved one that has gotten sick. We pray that you would be with those who are grieving, that you would walk alongside them giving them comfort and strength during this difficult time. We pray that you would continue to be with all of us and everyone worldwide as we continue to muddle through this pandemic. We pray, we thank you uh, that all the news we've been seeing about a vaccine 
this week has been positive, that there seems to be a light appearing at the end of this tunnel. And we pray that you would keep everybody safe as that light becomes bigger. We pray all these things as your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, my friends, as we come into our time of offering once again, I would like to just repeat my gratitude for your generosity to the ministries of People's Church through your giving, your tithes, and your offerings that you give uh, both electronically through our website, through our app, and um, by mailing in um, your gifts to the church. There are so many ministries that happen that, that I know folks didn't see when we were um, here together, and I know they're harder to see um, when we aren't gathered. And so um, I like to lift up different ministries that, that make a difference in people's lives. And one of the things that's happening right now is a virtual Bible study um, with several of us on Wednesday afternoons. And in fact, um, I'm planning another either Bible study or, or a small group discussion um, for just after Christmas on Sunday morning after worship that the entire congregation uh, of course is invited to and and it's one of the ways through studying scripture through studying together not only do we grow closer to God but we are able to connect and build relationships with one another and so I'd like to thank you for making these ministries possible let's sing our doxology thanksgiving. Gracious God, teach us to give thanks in all circumstances. For you are always with us. Thank you for the privilege of sharing what we have with others. Of giving ourselves away in love and of receiving the gifts that others share with us with our whole being, spirit, and soul, and body. We rejoice in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
and now receive this blessing. May the God of justice be your path, the Lord of mercy be your guide, and the spirit of love be your light, this day and forevermore. Amen.